Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and this fall favorites video which I entitle Wear, Want, Watch, Read, Eat, Ease, Succeed, quite the mouthful, essentially as a fall favorites. So I do these periodically and share my favorite things and what I love about this series is that it covers the entire gamut from fashion, you know, the obvious things that I usually love to talk about, the aesthetic side of my life, along with some practical and edible things, and we finish off with a success tip that I feel like I've learned along the way or want to pass along. So let's get right into it and also get past the obvious elephant in the room, which is that it is cashmere season. Happy cashmere season to those of you who are as obsessed as I am. If you haven't seen my closet cleanup video, you'll know I donated quite a lot of sweaters and clothing in general. I'm selling a few on El Florent's closet and that has led me to pick up a few neutral sweaters that I know I will get so much wear out of this season, including the one I'm wearing. So I've been really enjoying the selection at Floro. That's one place that I've really enjoyed but I thought I would share with you my kind of top three neutral sweaters that I've loved and then what I like to wear them with as well. So this one you saw in my lookbook, but I wanted to share my favorite unexpected color combination. So from I think that whole video that I filmed right by the pond where I just thought nature really highlighted the beautiful um, vibrancy of my rainbow cashmere collection. This is my Iolite scarf in this kind of bright light. It looks kind of purple, but in other lights it looks more blue or a little bit darker or lighter. And that's what I love about it and about pairing it with gray. So I took the plunge finally to try Jenny Kane because I was just seeing her designs everywhere. And I do really like this sweater, although it does drown me a little bit, um, but it's super cozy and a really good layering piece. And the cashmere is very good quality. So this is the famous cocoon sweater. So I finally have one of those. You also really are loving the citron. And it's no surprise why, because I think it's really hard to wear yellow, but this particular yellow is, so gorgeous. I think the Rainbow Collection might be my favorite collection that I've ever done because it's so exciting to work with my supplier in Nepal because they haven't been able to work at all really for quite a good chunk of the year being on lockdown even when a lot of other countries weren't. So they were very excited to get back into production as was I. I'm so grateful for your enthusiasm and I've put through another order because I'm pretty close to selling out now um, from the first lot that I received, so really happy and thankful for that. Thank you for your enthusiasm and positivity. You know, being a business owner that works with another business owner in particular, as I do with my supplier in Nepal, which is a family owned business, it's exciting and enriching, but I also feel a sense of responsibility as well to keep it going and make it successful. And so when you guys love something and you let me know, um, that is something that I pass along and um, I'm able to support them and in turn their community as well. And then the other two that I thought I would show you is this zip up one. I feel like the whole zip up design is really huge this fall. It's kind of a little bit 90s in a good way, especially when it's done, you know, pretty simply in terms of the design. It's not like overly huge. Um, and the quality is really good. It's just a really good classic piece. Even once that trend has passed, I know I'll keep wearing pieces like this oatmeal one from Foloro. And the nice thing about this one is it's 95% cotton, 5% cashmere. So it's actually not that warm. You can kind of see it's almost like a little bit sheer. So I always wear a tank underneath it. Um, and it's been a really good transition piece as the weather isn't really that cold here yet. So. And then for more of a date night kind of sweater, Brochure Walker is outrageously expensive, even for cashmere, um, but I love their aesthetic. So once in a while, kind of once a season, I'll splurge on one or two pieces. Um, and this one is from last year, like an entire year ago, but I didn't wear it that much then because there was really nowhere to go. And so I'm wearing it a lot this year. You can see it looks like I've layered it with a lace tank, but I haven't because it's all 
one piece and so that makes it just less bulky and less fussy I think it just gives you that effortless look right away and I know they have this as a sweater as well as a cardigan and they keep kind of selling out and coming back into stock so I'll include the links for everything but also the ones that I can find for that particular item and the last fashion piece that I love are actually the pants that I'm wearing right now which are suede from Spanx they are kind of like a trouser legging but worn with a longer sweater I think they're really nice and you know would dress up nicely they're not too casual and I love how real these feel and how soft um, but the main thing that I love about these pants is how comfortable they are so I think we're gonna see more and more neat things um, from the founder of Spanx but I really love these suede like pants there's also a boot cut version if that's your jam um, and then I've been loving the jean jean ish leggings I think they're called and I featured those in my lookbook as well as one of my most worn items um, and I keep referring to my lookbook because before I forget I want to remind you that I have a giveaway open for this wolf jewelry um, pochette with the zipper that's really beautiful and really premium that will be filled with the winner's choice of Nouvelle Pearl jewelry pretty much like one of almost every item in my new collection and that will be announced October 31st so that's pretty soon now and your odds are excellent of winning so go enter by following me here and following me on Instagram and leave your Instagram handle on there so that I can contact the winner. As to wanting things, I really can't say that I want for much these days. I have two itches that I plan to slowly scratch at over a long period of time. The first I'm going to show you a prototype of because this is something that I actually plan to design because over about a six month period because this started um, actually around the spring I wanted a leather tote with braided handles that could fit my laptop but didn't look like a laptop bag was you know structured enough to handle some weight you know of the things that you'd want to carry around during the day. Um, but has like a really plush feel. So I'm going to show you the prototype, but the funny thing is it actually meets very few of the design elements that I have planned out. The only thing that it does meet and why I, you know, had it made is to see how I feel about braided handles because they aren't something that I could really find on any existing design on the market that I liked that fit the other things that I was looking for. So I wanted to see how those kind of wore over time. So quite a while in, here we are, and I love the handles. I'm really just so in love with the texture of a braided handle. I think it adds interest to an otherwise quite plain and classic design. Um, but there are other facets of the bag that don't quite meet what I want. So this doesn't reflect the final result. It's just kind of my first stab. And I thought, you know, rather than be secretive and in like two years, I'll come out and be like, oh my gosh, for years I've been working on this and so much behind the scene, da da da, like all influencers say why not just start today just a couple of months in and it allows me transparency and just the ability to share my journey and my excitement with you which is what this channel and this community is all about but it also allows me to genuinely ask you if you are going to design a work tote kind of like this but a little bit smaller this one is too big um it's way too big like compared to my size and also even what I carry around it makes it overly heavy and kind of cumbersome but you kind of get the idea right that it'll be the size of like a MacBook Pro with two handles and it'll be a tote style but being me it's going to be a little bit elevated with really beautiful leather and a few interesting details um so if you were designing that, what would you want to see out of it? What is the handbag? And I know you all have really good taste in handbags because that's how a lot of you found me um, was through, you know, handbag um, luxury videos. What is it that you can't find that you would love to see in a handbag? Um, keeping in mind, this is not going to be like a really high price or a really low price. It's going to be a mid price probably because I want the quality of the leather to be really high, but I also want to keep it affordable because I think it 
might just be more of an everyday kind of bag um, rather than a going out bag. So I'm kind of setting that intention and asking you that question in these early stages. And I even have another prototype on order now being made for me. So this is the start of a conversation. Um, so there's that that I'm sort of gonna be thinking about for quite a while. And then the other thing that I'm looking forward to the search for, because that's often what it is for those of us who are pretty picky about you know what we like. So um, as I've passed the bar, I want to have one investment piece around me that reminds me of that milestone. And rather than get a handbag or a piece of jewelry, two other things that unsurprisingly I considered I actually want to get a chair a reading chair that will stay with me forever so it'll be an investment piece um, and I'm balancing whether or not I want to go with a custom-made piece from somewhere like Pottery Barn which has quite a few options in this really pretty burnished leather called bourbon um, and you know kind of have this reading chair look to it either tufted like a Chesterfield or even without tufting more of a simple kind of reading chair look with an ottoman with the idea that I'll probably end up doing quite a bit of work in that chair because I don't always work sitting at a desk um, and I'm kind of torn over whether to go that way, have it custom made, you know, probably get here like next spring if I ordered it today. Um, so it's gonna be a moment um, either way or kind of embark on this more local search, maybe looking at estate sales. I mean, ideally what I would find is like maybe a, an attorney retiring who has a super like mannish chair. Maybe it smells a little bit like cigars. I don't know. I want a chair that's had an interesting life. And so I'm not sure that the custom made route is really what I want, um, but I'm open to suggestions. Another thing I've considered is um, buying on somewhere like First Dibs, uh, Ralph Lauren a reading chair because that is an iconic American piece but I haven't found one where the price is like under like 8k seems a little high to me given the condition of a lot of them which is what I would call like well beyond well worn including some like kind of nasty stains it kind of freaks me out when the stains on like a reading chair like that or a writer's chair as a Ralph Lauren one is called are on the seat kind of place because that just makes me think of you know unfortunate kind of stains that you wouldn't want um but i don't know i'll keep looking if you guys can think of anything exciting let me know about that too maybe you have one in your home that already kind of matches um the aesthetic that i'm discussing but i definitely want it to be very masculine because in my head it isn't gonna happen in this home but like someday i want to have this like super jewel toned a library with a lot of very like kind of traditionally masculine accents, like, um, I don't know, some heavy decorative ashtrays and leather bound books and this super like old leather chair that's maybe like a little bit crusty and then all these bookshelves. And I don't know, in my head, I can see it as I'm describing that and I want that to be my in-home office. So I'm kind of building this vision slowly over time and this is the beginning of that. For the watch category, I've watched quite a few silly shows as a bit of a break from studying over the summer. So these are my favorites. Um, Parisian Agency was fun because not having seen a lot of my mom since I was in Hawaii in the spring, I miss speaking French and that show is in French and set in Paris. I'm not very into reality TV, but this show kind of is like that. So it's about a family of estate agents and they sell luxury property. They list luxury properties in the Parisian market. And so you get to see their family dynamics since it's a family business. I mean, they're all very interesting personalities. It wasn't too over the top because once reality TV shows turn into this kind of like screaming salad of negativity, I just can't anymore. It no longer feels like a relaxing, silly thing to watch, but it makes me feel stressed. I can feel my chest tighten as I watch it. So I can't do that. And I really appreciated that this show, you know, although it's a reality show, wasn't like that. And instead you see like kind of just interesting dynamics of a family that works together. But the real reason that you need to watch it is for the interiors, even just 
the floors alone, truly, like the floors that you see in these, you know, grand Parisian apartments. And sometimes they've reconditioned to make them kind of a little bit more trendy now um, with the light wood by sanding it but they're just seriously so stunning and the home decor for all of them is very different some of them are more modern some of them are more classic but honestly it's to die for and there's nothing in North America that compares with that so I'm so happy that you know they've kind of taken a camera over there so I think they're gonna get a season two um and I haven't seen anything about that show on social media so I really want it to like keep going because I'm really enjoying it and I'd love to see more of that in my books, it's like selling Sunset, but better because it doesn't have the fake drama and hair extensions. Then another one that, you know, the style element is kind of part of it is Cruel Summer. If you want more of like a thriller kind of show as we head towards Halloween, um, Cruel Summer is a 90s based like teen thriller. It has some very dark themes of abuse in it, but I thought it was well and tastefully done um, and just generally interesting as well as being somehow a little bit nostalgic since it's set in the 90s, which, you know, for those of us who are 80s babies, I'm from 88, um, we'll have fond memories of some of those styles with the like butterfly hair clips and stuff. So I thought that was neat. And then a movie that I can't believe I've never seen because it's definitely more than a few years old is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day, I think is what it's called. And it has Amy Adams in it. And I feel like she plays this um, kind of frivolous actress in a way that very few people could pull it off and still be likable. Um, and <laughs> I sense a theme here. The reason you have to see it is, well, the script is excellent and heartwarming and has such a beautiful ending. It's just the whole thing is beautiful. But the setting, oh my gosh, you guys, it's London. It's got all the most beautiful buildings. That's our art deco, but it's actually filmed on the cusp of the war. Um, and if you've ever seen the TV adaptation of um, Hercule Poirot, so Agatha Christie with David Suchet and how they filmed that, that series with all of the beautiful art deco settings. This movie reminded me a little bit of that, but like even more lavish. So um, you'll have to watch it if you've never seen it before or watch it again <laughs> um, if you've already seen it. And the last series, like Cruel Summer, is definitely a little bit more dark, but it's different. It's more of like a dark humor kind of series. I thought the acting in it was good enough to pull off like a very difficult series um, with very difficult dynamics um, where it's essentially a husband who implants a chip into the brain of his wife sort of soft launch this new technology that he's invented for couples his name is goggle that sort of tells you a lot um, and the whole series is quite weird and there were some moments where I'm like this is just a little weird I think I'm just gonna stop stop watching but then I kept going and then it was over it went by super fast super quick series um, but then you kind of look back on it and see how, kind of how intelligently it was written um, so if you want something a little bit more quirky I would say try that series out um, it's gonna get a second season as well so made for love so I could hold a whole stack up of bar study books right now and just tell you about those but I'm gonna save that for a different video and um, show you the only thing that is book like not related to that that I have had recently but it's really just an interlude because I am so excited to start reading fiction again I just really wasn't able to um, while I was studying for the bar it was just too much um, reading was something that I had to sacrifice and I made quite a few sacrifices but that was one of them um, so this book was a gift to me after I finished the bar from one of my mentors um, and it's all about cloud computing agreements and it's a practitioner's um, handbook I'll read you the back it says because they put it better than I probably would having only gotten through about a fraction of it so far you can see how detailed it is it's got a lot of detail to it and lots of excerpts of agreements as well so it says this practical reference guide is ideal for both lawyers and business people including contract managers procurement officers IT staff and anyone else responsible for contracts 
Perhaps most important, this book is accessible, clear, and precise, like a good contract. Um, I love how practical this book is, so it's something that you kind of thumb through, especially if you're looking at a particular section of an agreement, you want to know a bit more about it as it relates to the tech sphere. But given that more of you are attorneys than I think I ever realized, um, and I noticed that in the comments of my swearing in videos, so um, I thought that was quite neat as I get to know, you know, my community. Two mentions. Number one is premature because I'm still going through the learning curve of it. Um, so I bought an uni pizza oven after I finished my exams um, and I love it, but it's a learning curve because it's so hot. It's twice as hot as a conventional oven. It has a live flame at the back. There are multiple versions like a wood pellet loaded one or a propane one, which is the one I got. Um, it's been on social media a lot, so I don't feel like it needs too much introduction, but once I perfect recipes with it, as well as different things to cook in it other than pizza, I'm sure it's something that I'll share in what I eat in a day videos or during Vlogmas. I think that'll be fun too. We can decorate some pizzas together. Um, so that was, you know, my big purchase cooking wise and something I've been experimenting with. And then for my neighbor and friend's birthday, I wanted to bake a sweet treat, but not a whole cake. Um, so these are the leftovers that I made. They are called Financier um, and this YouTube channel, I think it's called French Cooking Academy. He's so great. He teaches you all of the classics of French cooking as well as everything else that you could pretty much possibly want to make. Um, and might have enjoyed in French restaurants. And this is one that you will probably have seen in French bakeries, but they usually come in little bars, like a mini loaf shape. Um, but I only had mini muffin tins, so that's what I used as well as what he uses as well. So a financier is an almond little cake, and there's some debate around the history of it. He presents it really well, but essentially, um, one of the theories is that it was something that was eaten as a snack um, by bank workers and investment analysts um, because it sort of sits really well in your pocket um, and kind of keeps well. Um, and it's definitely a bit of an energy boost because the almond meal in it is very substantial. If you like marzipan, you must make these. But even if you're not a huge almond person, consider whether you love the taste of browned butter if you've never had it before, Bernoisette, it really makes anything that you add it in. It's a very dominant flavor. It's got this kind of caramel kind of taste to it, um, but it's also very nutty. You know, it's like a hazelnut kind of flavor that you get when you brown butter. And so these little cakes have that flavor. And then you can put whatever you want in the middle. I just plopped a few raspberries and blackberries um, for some variety in the middle, but you can also make them plain as well. Um, and they were so easy to make. I really like made them on a lunch break um, pretty fast. You let this kind of batter with the brown butter sit in the fridge for an hour scoop it out bake it up for like 15 minutes and they're done it's a lot less work than you know full cake um, would be and I loved it and my neighbor did too so I thought I would pass that recipe along because it's not really something I've ever thought of making before despite enjoying quite a few another thing it's similar to is Madeleine um, cookies if you ever had those um, they're kind of in the same little like yummy with a cup of coffee kind of thing this lint remover is amazing. It's so good for a velvet sofa. If you've got, um, you know, little lint things and cat fur on it, this just scrapes it right off. It would work well on these pants if I had a lot of cat fur on them. You know, anything that has kind of fibers to it or, and you wanna be gentle, but it's gonna be more gentle than a little electric kind of tool would be, um, sweaters. You know, if you get little lint um, bobbles underneath um, the arms of your cashmere sweaters, just this gently dragged along slowly to pull out the little pills um, works really well. So I have this little tool. It's really well made and it's 12 bucks. So I thought I would share that with you. And then my other, practical thing that I bought is this new carry-on suitcase um, for next time I travel in this beautiful forest green um, which has been just such a color of choice for me so I got the personal item and the carry-on and you guys won't be surprised to see 
it's basically just like one shade darker than my Jade Nouvelle Apparel scarf. So that's like a whole traveling outfit that I'm really excited to use. So that is it for all of the aesthetic things in this video. I will just leave you with this tip to succeed. Consider it a taster in the bar video that will come, but it's also a career tip as well. So somewhat unrelated to the bar, although it's something that made a huge difference for me. So when I, you know, registered to take the exam, an intention that I set was that I wanted to earn a passing and beyond passing score before I sat the exam. Um, and if that sort of sounds kind of weird, what that means is I wanted to feel like the work I had done earned me a passing score and admittance just based on the actual study part. And having that mindset allowed me to go into the exams at least with a bit of confidence. And I think I've approached a lot of things in life like that, but it's also something that's so easy to forget is that if you do the work, you can act like you've earn something and have confidence in your work and your actions and your standing in that community or profession. And, you know, for anyone who sometimes struggles with imposter syndrome, that can be such a game changer. And it's so important and not just, you know, waffly kind of aspirational stuff because I have seen a huge difference in the quality of my work just in terms of that mindset it makes a huge difference in terms of the actual deliverables that you produce and so i thought there might be someone out there who might need to hear that i feel like i needed to hear that a few times over you know the last few months especially so i thought i would pass that forward and kind of leave it at that as a taster for some of the study tips um, videos that i will be putting together over the next few months as i kind of think about what worked and what didn't for me because not every thing um, was you know a perfect hit in terms of some of the books and strategies that I tried out so I thought I would share the ups and downs of it in a further video but leave you with this kind of general taster and tip um, before we get there so thank you so much for watching this video I look forward to continuing more installments on style as we move throughout the fall season and I will see you in my next installment bye